an old Mammo traction engine rebuild. This is part four. Cleaning the wheels, painting the front axle beam and fitting the canopy. This is a very important part of the traction engine and usually this is missing. So what is it? It's the axle beam stabiliser spring. Without this, the axle beam can move too far and the wheels hit the smoke box marking the paint. It's a very simple device. And if your Mammo traction engine hasn't got one of these, I suggest you buy one. You can get them from eBay. It also makes the pressed steel front axle beam look a lot better. The axle beam on this engine was very rusty indeed, so I spent quite a while using wet or dry sandpaper and emery cloth to clean it up. And this clip shows me painting the front axle beam using some etch primer. The axle beam on my large 4.5 inch scale traction engine is painted the same colour as the engine. So I thought it would do exactly the same on this smaller traction engine. I'm painting the main pivot as well with etching primer and here it is. The paint is drying and I've speeded this clip up so if you look carefully you can see the paint drying. And while the paint is drying it's time to modify the canopy support. I bought a model TE1 boiler and firebox because this is the one I remember on the Mammoth steam tractor I had as a child. On the later model TE1A, the back canopy fixing was very different as you can see here. Once again I had a look on eBay and was delighted to find a replica part of an original TE1 canopy support. Very simple to fit, first of all I drilled out the rivets. These are just ordinary pop rivets made from aluminium and they drilled out very easily. Then it was a very simple job to bolt the new canopy support in place with the nuts and bolts provided. The earlier style TE1 canopy wasn't quite as nice as the one on the TE1A, that's why I'm doing it this way. The TE1 canopy was just plain and didn't have any writing on the side. On the Mammoth TE1A tractor the chimney is different. It has a cast part right at the top of the chimney into which the knurled bolt at the front of the canopy fits to secure the canopy to the chimney at the front. This is an easy fix though. I just drilled a hole in the chimney but not all the way through. Just deep enough to take the point of the bolt that's in the canopy. Two things you have to be careful with here. One is not to go all the way through because it wouldn't look good from the inside of the chimney and also it's a good idea to control the drill so it doesn't slip and mark the paint. And here's the boiler and firebox assembly with the canopy fitted. I quite like the way this looks, and it's a much better idea than the brass spring clip on the original TE1 canopy. Time to look at the wheels, they are very dirty, but for starters I'm only interested in cleaning up the rim. I tried using Scotch Brite, but I needed something a little bit more abrasive, so I used a piece of emery cloth. This made short work of cleaning up the rim and removed all the paint from around the edge. At this stage I would just like to mention that I'm not going to repaint the wheels. There's no point in making this model look pristine. They aren't very expensive to buy new. If you wanted a pristine condition one with a box, I'd just buy a new one. And besides, although some of the paintwork is chipped, it's not that bad. Now I want to clean up the outer part of the wheel. I don't want to make it really shiny, but I'd like it to look better than this. I was about to say, I put it in the chuck in the lathe, spun the wheel and then cleaned up the outer edge using some emery cloth, but then I thought to myself that most people who have mammods probably do not have a lathe. So I'll show an easier method of cleaning up the wheels if you don't have a lathe. I fitted a nut and bolt through the centre of the wheel. Tightened it up with my spanner. And now I'm going to fit this into my electric drill. So I can rotate the wheel and hold some emery cloth against it to clean it up. It's possibly slightly more dangerous than doing it by hand, but if you're careful, you won't hurt yourself. First of all, I used some medium emery cloth. This cleaned up the edge of the wheel very well, and it even got through some of the corrosion. I repeated the process for the second wheel. I used emery cloth first, followed by wet or dry sandpaper, and then finished off the job with some Scotch Brite. Scotch Brite is like an industrial version of a scouring pad and it gets a great finish on the wheel treads. The wheels are very dirty, and now they have metal particles all over them. So after reading the directions, I'm using some panel wipe. This is naphtha, it's a very good degreaser and cleaner, and evaporates very quickly. 
As far as I'm aware, it's the same stuff that you'd normally put in a petrol cigarette lighter. When working with panel wipe in this way, you need to be in a very well-ventilated area. After cleaning the two rear wheels, I cleaned the front pair of wheels as well. Look how much dirt has come off them. In this clip, I've fitted the axle and the two rear wheels. Now I need to fit the end cap. I'm just going to use some Loctite 603 for this. Loctite 603 is a special adhesive, it's called a retainer. And with the drop of this in the end cap, it's going nowhere. I think I'll repair the paint on this wheel, because it was damaged when I removed the hub cap. As the etching primer is now dry, I'm about to paint the axle beam. And the colour that I'm using is Great Northern Railways Green, which is very similar to Mammoth Green. Basically, I had a choice, either live with the rusty metal or paint it green. I'm going to paint the centre part using some gloss black paint. If I can get a good enough red colour match when I repair the paint on the rear wheel, then I may touch up the red paint on the front wheels. Here's a shot of the green paint drying. And now I'm painting the centre part using Humbrol gloss black. Once I'd finished the black painting, that's all I could do with this part of the engine. I'll fit this part to the engine, complete with the control spring, in the next episode. This is the bunker that supports the burner. I sanded off the damaged paint and gave it a coat of heat-resistant paint. Once the paint was dry, I thought it would be a good idea to assemble the bunker, complete with the burner, and fit it to the engine. And now the engine is starting to look just how I want it to look, not new, but in good condition and cared for just like the one I had as a child. And that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.